afternoon everyone, thanks for joining me for this next episode of my video blog. Um, in this uh, episode I just wanted to cover what happened in the uh, last lesson I had um, and take you through some of the things I learned. Um, the lesson, as I think I said in my last episode, was straight level and balance flying. Um, and this time I was actually able to do an awful lot more of the um, preparation and checklist running um, than previous lessons. So I ran the pre-start checklists and start checklists. I did the um, radio calls to the tower. I taxied the aircraft to the holds. I ran the power checks and did all of the before start checklist. So it was actually really cool to be doing so much more so early on in my um, training. Um, the radio telephony was interesting. Um, I hadn't really had much in the way of practice and the instructor gave me some hints and tips about what to say before I did the calls. But of course, as soon as I pushed the push to talk button, my mind went completely blank. So. It was really daunting and a little bit embarrassing. I'm sure I didn't do it right and I, I chose the wrong words in some of the calls, but it was a good experience. Um, and at the end of the lesson, he gave me a radio telephony card, which shows through the key phases of flight what I should be saying and, and what I should expect to receive back from the tower. So in the next lesson, that will improve greatly. I've already been doing a bit of practice. Um, the day of my lesson was, it was really gusty. In fact, the title of this episode is the, the, the wind forecast. So wind 280 at 12, gusting to 30. So as I arrived at the flying school, the idea of holding an aircraft straight level and balanced for 45 minutes was a little bit daunting. Um, the, the wind was really out of the limits for me to do the takeoff and landing, although I'm not really doing that yet. That'll come in later lessons. But we used the clock code to calculate uh, the crosswind component. So we were taking off from runway 24, um, and the winds was from 280. So 40 degrees difference means we take roughly three quarters of the wind. So that's nine knots gusting to 22. <laughs> so quite a crosswind, quite bumpy. In fact, I was quite happy to uh, let the instructor do the takeoff and uh, landing. Um, don't forget to check out my previous episode, episode three, to show you how to do that clock code. There's a little explanation on how to do it there. So this flight we flew from High Wycombe, flew north over Stoke and Church, out towards um, Stoke School and Silverstone. The views were incredible, um, really nice day once we were out of the hilly area of the Shiltons. And I was able to hold the aircraft within the tolerance. So the, the tolerance band for height is 100 feet, for direction is 10 degrees and throughout the, the lesson I was well within that. Um, I also got to properly trim the aircraft um, myself and um, I found that relatively straightforward to do and I was able to get the aircraft pretty stable. Um, we also did a turn back, so once I'd finished flying in a straight line towards Silverstone, we turned back south and headed towards High Wycombe. So I, bank the aircraft to the left, 30 degrees of bank. Um, one of the things I really noticed was just how much altitude I was losing. So it's something that I need to learn when we move on to, to turns and steep turns later on in my lessons. Um, but also I noticed when I was concentrating on keeping the aircraft level, I have a tendency to let the nose drop and therefore the aircraft descends. So again, something that I want to address in the next lessons is working out how to do that. Um, it just means that I'm spending more time having to look at the instruments to see what the aircraft's doing and at this stage I should be able to look out of the window and, and uh, keep the aircraft level. Also, because we were in uh, straight and level flights above 3,000 feet, every 10 to 15 minutes we were doing the Frieda check, so this was new to me, um, this lesson. Um, so that's fuel, radio, engine, direction indication and altimeter checks. In fact, I'm just popping up on the screen now um, some, some graphics that show you what I learned. So for fuel, it's check that the fuel pump's on, um, calculate the remaining fuel and switch tanks if necessary to keep balance of the aircraft. Radio, we're checking that we can still hear um, the tower and other aircraft and that the squatch setting is correct. Um, also, if we're on a cross country, we'd use this as an opportunity to, to prepare the next frequency. 
Um, e stands for engine, so we're checking the temperatures, pressures, suction and altimeter are uh, all displaying correctly. Uh, for direction, we're checking that the compass and the direction indicator are synchronised. Um, obviously, to do that, you need the aircraft to be level in level flights and also not increasing or decreasing speed because that can make the compass uh, display incorrectly. Um, and then lastly is the altimeter setting. Um, so we're checking our height and then making sure that the setting is correct, right? be it QNH, QFE or flight level. Um, I must admit, when we first went through Frida on the ground, the bit that, that worried me the most was the maths related to um, calculation of fuel or fuel burn. I must admit, maths isn't my strong point, but um, I'm showing the model up on the screen. Um, we came up with this as, a, as an easier way to track what was going on. So um, at this first step, we know that it's 15 minutes has passed since we first ran the Frida check. And so we can base our calculations on a quarter of an hour's worth of fuel burn. So in the aircraft I was in, the, the Piper PA28, we know it burns th around 36 litres of fuel an hour. So in half an hour, that's 18 litres, or in 15 minutes, that's 9 litres. So using a simple table about knowing where we started when we were on the ground, in the left tank we had 40, in the right tank we had 50, we took off with the right tank engaged, so I start minusing nine litres every 15 minutes from that tank until we switch and then doing the same on the other side. Um, that actually took away some of the fear I had around doing the maths on the fly, <laughs> literally in the aircraft. Um, and I'll now do this on my kneeboard every time we go up. Um, so that was really useful. One other trick that the instructor taught me is to use the Frida check as an opportunity to switch on the car heat and make sure there's no ice building up in the engine. Um, so as I'm showing on the screen now, what I do in the Frida is I add at the beginning switching the car heat on and at the end switching the car heat off because in reality when you're running the Frida check you're probably not going to do it all in a chunk, you still need to maintain a, a visual awareness around the aircraft and also um, making sure you're straight level and balanced uh, as you, you were planning to be. So it's going to take between 30 seconds and a minute to run the Frida checks and at the end you just whip the car heat off and that's that um, satisfied too to make sure there's no ice build up. Um, so again just another hint that the instructor gave me which I found really useful. Um, I also as promised asked the instructor whether I was allowed to take my GoPro up because I really wanted to do some filming whilst I was um, doing my lessons. Unfortunately, the flying school's policy is not to allow um, additional camera equipment in the aircraft. And that's just because they had an incident previously where the um, camera became loose and got wedged underneath the rudder pedals. So obviously uh, undesirable and quite unsafe situation. So now in the, in the terms of, um, that I've agreed for the flying school, it says I'm not allowed to take any camera equipment up. Also, a little bit disappointed that I'm not able to take any additional people up um, during my lessons. Again, the flying school now has a policy that the ratio of um, instructors to unqualified people in the cockpit is one to one. Um, so anyone else in the um, aircraft has to be qualified in order to come up. And unfortunately, the people that wanted to come up with me aren't. So what that means is it just I will have to wait until I've got my license before um, that can happen, but never mind. <laughs> I guess it's all for, for safety reasons, which is the most important thing. So for the next lesson, I have my radio telephony card, so hopefully my phraseology should be much more on point for the next lesson. Hopefully I won't be embarrassed any uh, anymore in that respect. Um, I also got given a questionnaire that I need to complete before I can go solo. So. Um, it covers all sorts of things around air law um, and rights of way and um, what to look out for in terms of unmanned airfields and how to tell the um, direction of landing and takeoff. Um, I've gone through it, I must admit there's some stuff that I don't know, but I guess on my next rainy day lesson my instructor and I can go to start, start working through that. Um, my next lesson is on Saturday um, and because we didn't get time to cover it last time, I will be covering straight level and balanced flying but with changes of speed, so throttling up, um, throttling down and then in including flap um, 
to maintain straight level and balanced flying. So I think that's probably about all I wanted to cover in this lesson. As usual, down here you should see my Instagram and Twitter feeds. Um, do feel free to send me any feedback, comments or, or messages of goodwill on there. <laughs> um, if there's anything that you want me to cover in a later lesson again, just uh, use those social media accounts to get in touch with me. And for now, um, I think that's it. So thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you all soon. Thank you.